Welcome to the Steelers Realm Podcast. Here are the boys of Steelers Realm. Good evening, Steelers Realm. That's right. TA is back in the saddle after a two-week hiatus. And boy, have I missed a lot of Steelers news and talking Steelers with you guys. But before I go ahead and get started, it might sound a little funny tonight. Why? Because we fired JT. That's right. He's gone. He's out of here. Adios, amigos. I'm just kidding, Steelers realm. JT is taking a well-deserved night off. That means I am left with the two rookies. And to my right, the man we've known to know as CJ. How are you, son? Can't really complain. Buckers are playing some great baseball. As you called us rookies. Um, I'm hoping someone can maybe mentor me, unlike the last guy. Oh. If you know what I'm referencing. Boy, I tell you, you probably come to the wrong place for any mentoring. I'll have you, uh, let's just bring on our next guest before <laughs> I go ahead and say what I should not say. And the man from Ohio, the one who has just come on board, running us over like a freight train. Where is he at? TA, what is happening, brother? I've been waiting for this moment for a while. The famous Amos is back and not the cookie man, baby. It's the Steeler man. Oh, My life man. is good. But life is good on this end. Go Steelers. What's up, Steelers Nation? Let's rock and roll. Well, gentlemen, it's a pleasure being with both of you tonight. Man, we have a full pack segment to go ahead and talk about. We got some smack to talk about minicamp. We can't forget about old Najee because there's some talking going on about Najee. And we're going to break into a little bit of the coach's corner because there's some coaches out there being a little vocal that we're going to go ahead and talk about. And then we got to talk about Omar is getting busy. And then we're going to have a little bit of segment history forged in steel, followed up by a little bit of outside the realm. But before we get into that, I want you all to know the reason that I have been gone for two weeks is because I was on a manscape retreat. That's right. A manscape retreat. You know why I was on a manscape retreat? Because it's the best in men's below the waist grooming. And let me tell you something, boys and girls, I had a jungle down there and with their products being precision engineered tools for my family jewels, manscapes performance package was the ultimate men's hygiene at that retreat and i absolutely joined over four million men worldwide who trust the performance package of manscape and i am proud to offer you steelers realm this exclusive offer no you're not going to get to go to the retreat like i did but you can receive 20 percent off and free worldwide shipping so all of you over in the uk all of you over in india because i know you need a little shave you can enter the code realm20 at manscaped.com. And if my math is correct, that's about 8 million balls. Kind of reminds me of, you know, who's got big balls? She's got big balls. And that's where we're at, buddy. So with that being said, I'll tell you what, CJ, what's the topic you'd like to talk about minicamp as we wrapped it up this week? Because it's kind of been interesting, but there's probably one thing that's really stood out the most, almost like deja vu. Yeah, Minka, old Minka. We got TJ Watt 2.0, a little hold-in situation here. And it's very interesting is we all know that uh, Minka's playing in his fifth year. He wants that extension, and it's time, right? He's pulling the TJ. I'm going to be here. I'm going to do my thing. I ain't, I ain't going to do any live drills. I just want my contract, man. And I really think it's going to be kind of the same thing as we saw last year. Uh, towards late summer, he's going to get it. 
and it's going to be well deserved. All right. Uh, before I comment, I want to hear what the freight train has to say about this. Well, you know what? Let's face it. Minka knows how important he is to this defense. And the Steelers know how important he is to this defense. <clears throat> Minka's not trying to put himself in harm's way by having some tragic injury, freak accident, you would say, in training camp, um, and to get his money. That's well-deserved. You know, Minka makes a lot of plays back there that's very, very important to this defense. Well worth the money in my book. All um, right, well, so so I got to add this, guys. All right. We watched TJ do this last year. We heard him catch flack. He was over there in the end zone just running by himself, doing his little drills. And everybody was kind of worried. You know, what kind of shape is he really going to be in? And he came out and he stunned us all. He tied the sack record. Now, that was coming off of a great performance from the year before that he should have been the defense player of the year. My question to you guys is, is did we see enough of Minka last year with splash plays and doing what Minka does to warrant him not practicing? And can we expect the same results? I think I, I honestly think so. Uh, being a safety is a little different uh, compared to being an edge rusher, right? It's harder to measure your worth, but at the same time, since Mink has come into the organization, he's had a profound effect on defense. Um, in my opinion, um, he's earned this right to do this. Uh, he's a very integral part of the defense. Um, and again, when it comes to safeties and the salary cap and your average, you know, yearly pay, I think there's there's a way where you can give him 15 and a half, 16 million, and you're not breaking the bank per year. Yeah, and I'd have to I'd have to agree with that too. And and when you look at last year, Minka kind of made some big plays when we needed it the most. I mean, you never really have to worry about Minka not tackling. Okay. He's a very good tackler. I think he showed up, you know, in some pass plays when we needed it the most. You know, he's all over the place. He sticks his nose in everything. So I definitely think he's definitely worth the money. He's definitely a top five safety in the league, if not top three. So pay him. We got him. We need him. Pay him. We got him. We need him. Well, he was our number one tackler, and that's not a good thing for a safety. So he definitely was able to go ahead and stop the ball. There's no doubt about that. My only concern is, is CJ, you put up, you've made a point that, being safety is not the same as linebacker. You're right. Linebacker, you've got your moves you got to make to get back to the quarterback. Safety, you got to be able to move those hips and shuffle those feet. And unless you're in camp actually seeing that, that's a lot of hand, eye, hip, foot coordination that is not happening. To me, that's a little bit of concern. Now, do I believe the boy needs to be paid? Absolutely, I believe he needs to be paid. But the one thing that I ask of the Steelers front office, get it done. Get him in there, and let's not drag this on until the third preseason game to before we see him. Let's get him on the phone, on the field sooner than later. And I think that's very important with just kind of the continuity of the defense as we enter this new year with a much younger offense, right? The importance of the defense and what they play in this year is right there. They're going to be relied upon heavy, whether Mitch is the quarterback, whether Kenny's the quarterback, doesn't matter. They're going to be expected to play lights out, okay? And with that, everyone on that defense needs to be on the same page. And with that comes practicing, playing together. This cannot, this is much different than TJ last year. As you said, TA, this cannot go into the late summer. This is something that I think, in my opinion, that needs wrapped up by the time that they go to report to training camp. All right. So now, freight train. What else is happening in camp? What else well, has been interesting? Well, Deontay Johnson is saying all the right things to get himself paid. Uh, I think he's taking a different approach to getting his contract done. 
that mink is doing and he's showing up and he's participating and say, kind of shutting out the outside noise and just playing football. And that that's definitely going a long way. All right. So now we've got two different situations here going. We got one guy who chooses to sit on the sideline and we got one guy who's choosing to play who's right. Who's wrong. I don't think either one of them are wrong. Yeah. You think either of them are right. Or is I this the NFL today? I think it was just the NFL today. And what's crazy is, you know, DJ's doing the right stuff and all that. I don't think he's going to get an extension. I think the Steelers are going to do plug and play when it comes to the draft with the wide receiver. And that sounds crazy because they're going to reward the guy that's actually not playing and not participating. So, well, and it, okay. and I base that not off DJ. I think DJ is a great wide receiver, but right now the wide receiver market's just so broken with recent contracts that are being signed that you can replace kind of replace that production with one fourth the cost, if that makes sense. So you bring up a good point there, CJ. If we look over the course of the last couple of drafts, it's been very wide receiver heavy. And it looks like it's going to be another wide receiver class again next year. And the one thing that we've seen the Steelers do over the decade, now remember that was under Colbert. We've got a new man under the helm, but we've been able to draft wide receivers. So Freight Train, do you agree with that or not agree with it? Do you pay the man or not pay the man? For me, I pay the man if it's a reasonable deal. Okay. What's reasonable? Not 20 plus million dollars a year, I don't think it's reasonable. I think I would, kind of the number is 17 and a half million. That that's where roughly, I was kind of sitting. Kind Six, of a, yeah. I would give him 16 to 18. I think he's deserved it. He got, you know, he wasn't, you know, a first ballot pro voter last year. A lot of things had to happen for him to get in there, but he had the numbers. And and I want to kind of dive into that too. I like the approach he's doing because he absolutely needs to be in there. He has he doesn't have a Hall of Fame quarterback throwing him the ball anymore. This is three new quarterbacks. Now, mind you, Mason was on the team, okay? But he has two other guys that he has to rely on to get those numbers to make him that money, okay? So I can understand why he's taking a different approach. Minka played with the majority of the guys that are on that defense. He kind of knows their niches somewhat he needs to get in but i think it's more important that deontay is in there because there's a lot of unknown about what's going on with the offense he needs to be there he needs to get on a rapport with one of these quarterbacks because one of them is taking over as a starter and that's to be continued of course and you're right deontay i think knows that he's got to be able to build a rapport with someone whoever that someone is going to be, especially if he's expecting to get paid because if the Steelers aren't going to pay him, somebody's got to, and he does not want to end up like Juju playing on $8 million one-year contracts. Absolutely, yes. So what else do we got going on there, CJ? How about uh, the, the Marvin Leal beefing up a little bit? So what does that accounts, mean? From all does it accounts, mean he's is he a linebacker or is he a defensive lineman? What are we going to do with gonna him? He's going to be a D lineman. He's put on 15 pounds. They draft him as a D lineman. I think it's going to come down to A, does he understand the defense? B, worst case scenario, I think he's kind of your depth guy. You know, I I, I like the draft pick when they took him. Um, To me, there's a lot of potential there. And with potential, that's a scary word because he hasn't proven anything. So we'll see. I'm not I'm not saying he's going to be the next two it. He's going to step in, do what two it has done. But I think it's a very interesting case where they might have been able to replace to it in the third round with good value. Now, do you think they really needed to replace to it at this time? I mean, we got Alalu, we got Montez, we've got louder I, milk i think got i the think davis boys i mean we're, we're, we're already making this guy sound like he's going to be the next mean joe green out here on the field i think i think they need a depth at that position 
Uh, we, you know, you had, didn't have two last year. Then you had uh, Tyson Alulu go down, and it was kind of a black hole up the middle. So anytime you can add a, a highly rated, well, not a highly rated prospect, but a prospect with a decent amount of potential size uh, that could possibly play that position long term, that's a good thing, right? I don't read into putting in any weight and all this other bullshit that's said throughout the offseason. It's going to come down to how he can perform in training camp, and we'll go from there. Because that is going to be a very interesting thing that takes place this year, that that middle of the defensive line. There's a lot of names, as you mentioned. Let's let's not beat around the bush here. I I, I think Tyson Alulu is definitely going to play defensive tackle. He's going to play that middle. That's what he played last year and did very, very well with. I I like the idea that he beefed up, and same with Loudermilk. You know, these these offensive linemen are are bigger and stronger at this level. Okay, I, adding some weight adds a little bit of power. You know, to push back to open those lanes to stop in the rush, to helping our linebackers out. I I do think that Leal is going to kind of get slow rolled into that position. I I honestly think Loudermilk is going to take that position over. Um, I saw we saw a lot of promise with him last year towards the end of the year. I think he's kind of earned his right to to slide over there. Now Montrevis Adams also played well was with some limited playing time, so there there is a lot of depth. You're right, CJ, but I I I think this is this 15 pounds. 15 pounds is a lot of weight. Okay, I think this is Demarvin kind of perfecting his craft and knowing and that Steelers have told him you are going to play here. So he's kind of honing in and, and perfecting his craft. So in six weeks for him to put on 15 pounds, what do you guys think he's eating? You think he's just hammering, hammering out eggs, some carbs, lots and lots of protein. Yeah. What, what, <laughs> if you had to gain 15 pounds in six weeks, what would you be? Eating? Big Macs. <laughs> I mean, he, he, he's he's on a Big Mac attack, man. Hmm. So, all right. So we're gonna have he, to ask him: was, was it the Big Mac? Was it the Whopper? Was it the what the hell they call Wendy's? The triple, the triple cheeseburger yes. with bacon. The Dave's yes. triple. Yes, the Dave's Dave's the triple Dave's. baconator. Man, because that's impressive. That all is right. impressive. Well, now did you guys see talking about Deontay? We've now got another wide receiver sign, leaving only one rookie unsigned from our draft class. So does this mean, and we knew we were going to sign him, but going back to what we were talking about earlier with Deontay and you guys saying pay him, we now have some pretty successful cats on that wide receiver side of the ball. Is Deontay really, truly, guys, going to get his pay day this year, or do we let him taste the free market? I tell you what, I think if Pickens goes out and he has a above-average rookie year, I think he walks. I really do. And I think that, and then they'll locate that money towards the offensive line. So let me rephrase this. Let me rephrase this. Let me, let, let me, and, and I'm just playing devil's advocate here. So we know that Chase is coming up. Is Freight Train is, is Chase's five year next year or is it the year after? He's four it's year. The, it's the year after, I want to say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay. he's next year. Mm-hmm. Chase next is year. next year. Chase is next year. So now we've got two young guys. We could potentially pick up another young guy and realistically going into next year, have three young guys and get rid of this me class that we kind of had going on with the TikTok group. So is this the Steelers way of out with the new old and in with the newer young? I mean, it's kind I, of always been that way. I I, I at, think go ahead, CJ. I was going to say, <laughs> look at, look at the Mike Wallace contract that he got. Look who they actually signed though. AB. 
Right? Or was it A okay. B or was it San Antonio Holmes? Well, San Antonio came before all came before both of them. No. Mike was here before. I'm double checking that one. Go but, ahead, you double check that one. You do the discount double check. Aaron Rodgers has got my back, baby. Stay farm all the way. Free <laughs> plug. Listen, I, I think Deontay getting paid kind of depends on what Chase Claypool does this year. Does Chase Claypool step up and make significant plays to ease that pain of letting essentially your number one receiver walk? Okay. Chase Claypool has to make a difference. Okay. With Mike Wallace, we had AB behind him. We knew what we had in AB. We still don't know the real Chase Claypool came and balled out his rookie year. Last year left a little bit to be desired. Okay. His nickname's Mapletron because of all these comparisons to Calvin Johnson. I, all I, I know seen... is he's he's not as sticky as maple syrup, nor not... as slippery. So he's yeah. got to have a huge improvement this year. Yes, and quit falling down to make a damn catch. Muscle up. You're a big receiver. Muscle up. Take that ball like you did your rookie year. Okay? That is going to depend on whether we pay Deontay Johnson or not. You know? But it's going to be interesting if he gets to go ahead and move to the inside like uh, he's talking that he wants to be inside, outside. But out of all the buzz, just keeping this thing rolling, keeping this thing rolling. My boy is back. Skipper, man. Now, I am excited. I don't know if you two remember Skipper. He's been around a little while. He's bounced around from the Steelers, to the Giants, to the Steelers, to the Falcons, to the Titans, to the Steelers. He's back, though. And I think that as far as a veteran signing goes, that's a hell of an improvement from Taco Bell. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Steeler fans remember when he was in training camp or, I'm sorry, preseason. He was all over that defense. He was making plays. I'm actually surprised they didn't keep him on. But, you know, behind our starters, Miles Jack and, and Devin Bush, there's it, that room's kind of mediocre. Okay. Um, Tuzar, to say bring, the least. To say the least. Tuzar has some speed. Okay. He's fast. He's a good tackler. Okay, we kind of got some one-trick ponies there behind our two starters. Okay, um, I, I I think it's a, a fantastic pickup, and let's see what happens. Okay, he's a, he's a matured. You know, there was a real famous um, linebacker that we had, number ninety-two, that was let go of training camp multiple times, and look what happened there. I'm not trying to make it make a comparison there, Tuzar and and James Harrison there. But, oh, I thought you meant that, he, you know, James got to take a trip to Europe. Tuzar didn't. Well, a little different situation, but the same at the same time, if that makes any sense. Hey, to me, to me, this is another great depth side, right? And one thing that's important is, as you guys have alluded to his speed, he's going to be plug and play on special teams, right? Worst case scenario, you have a high quality special teams player who provides depth at that linebacker position, right? Great signing. Worst case scenario, he gets cut. And if so, who cares? Didn't cost you a dime. Simple enough. That's all I'm spending on six. Oh, my God. Goodness, guys, have you seen this? JT, man, he's like the ghost from Christmas past checking in on us. If you all can't see it down there. He's like, have a great night, go Steelers. By the way, TA, I thought you, I thought I was your favorite insurance agent. You're right, JT. You are my favorite insurance agent. Now go back to sleep. You're waking up the rest of us. All right, guys. One last thing I got to talk about here. Have you guys seen the new NFL condom? Oh, those things just scream sex, baby. Those, I mean, those, that's, that's a rib. That's one of the ones with rib. Ribbed reservoirs, baby. Yeah. Talk about a fashion statement, also. You know, I, I thought it was kind of uh kind of nice. I mean, they are black by nature, but did you notice that Tomlin went ahead and flipped his inside out? 
I mean, is it okay for a black man to go white face since a white man can't go black face? <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know how that works with the white head, black head thing. I mean, I'm just trying to keep up with the who's who, what's what here in, this, in today's age. But my question is with, with the guardian cap now, in all seriousness, I was reading up on this thing and the NFL, of course, put in some chump change to go ahead and have this manufacturer, which I'm not going to give any props to, to go ahead and test it. And they said it reduces 10% of the concussions that they seen during training camp. My question is though, does that thing look like it's going to hold in more heat? And are we going to heat, see some heat strokes this year? I don't know, but those things look fucking miserable, miserable. I don't know about the heat. I, I was reading up about it too, and it's the thought process is when defensive linemen are batting down passes and they go down, they're not going to break a finger, break their hand. That's kind of what I took from it, why they're wearing them. I don't know. Whatever gets everyone healthy to train camp, I don't care. To me, they look heavy. They do. I, 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 they don't look comfortable. No. I mean, and, neck injuries, heat. I mean, there's a lot of things I have to question about this. And if we're throwing them on receivers, is that thing messing with the peripherals, the peripheral vision? You know, when you're coming out of your cut and you're looking for the ball, I mean, I'm Frater, sure if they think about it this way. If it's messing with their peripheral vision now and they're doing their job, just think how easy the regular season's going to be. Hey, if Deontay's be snagging them. balls from behind their head. Oh, Deontay's. You know, he might not even need the tennis balls anymore dialed was, in with that. That was thing. my next point. You're thinking like I'm thinking. Yeah, we I, graduated to a cap, not not <laughs> balls anymore. Man, I, I'm not sure I agree with anything. I mean, I wish AB was playing right now. I mean, you've seen what he went through just to have his own old helmet in Oakland. Could you imagine him out there practicing with this thing on his head? Oh, he'd be storming off the field. Oh, man. Could you imagine that intersection on McKnight Road? Jesus Christ, that would be dangerous. <laughs> All right. So, hey, speaking of Big Mac attacks, sounds like Najee this week got a little, just a little bit butthurt about the media talking about his weight. But I'm not quite sure if I'm following the story. Was it the media talking about his weight? Was it, was it Najee talking about his weight? And at the end of the day, I mean, the bottom line is, is the guys come in solid. Absolutely. We kind of dove into that with the last podcast. Four pounds is this four pounds is muscle. This this is not fat. So this was kind of something to talk about when there was nothing really else to talk about besides contract situations. OK. Deontay, or I'm sorry, Deontay. Najee, Najee, it's all the same. It's all the same. Yeah. Najee is a power runner with finesse. Four pounds of muscle is only going to help him and not hurt him. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why would you put on all this extra weight if he's going to take less snaps? Explain that to me, CJ. Again, I think this is when you look at Mike Tomlin's offense, he's always had kind of that bell call back. It doesn't matter who it was, whether it's Lev Bell, whether it's Rashad Mendenhall, whether it was James Conner when he filled in for him. They've always had one back. That one back played a very large percentage of those snaps. I think that this is kind of the evolution with Matt Canada, where he wants a secondary running back who's a little more shifty, a little quicker, someone that can maybe take the pressure off Najee. Um, and quite frankly, I don't want Najee taking the same amount of snaps that he did last year because at that point, you're only asking for injury. So I think this is kind of one of those things where I don't look more at the weight. He put on five pounds. I, as I said last week, he's the least of my worries about the offense. He could come in at 265 in camp. I wouldn't care. But I think this is kind of the evolution of MT looking and say, hey, I need to make this adjustment to our offense for this to work better all right freight train who spells him then is this is this running back by committee freight train or am i going to get to see you out there at training camp suited up ready to show him how to run the rock oh baby don't get me excited you know i go out there and run <laughs> that rock i'll run somebody over you know that 
<laughs> Listen, I I don't think we have the answer at running back. I think that what about Omar, Benny Football? Who? Benny Football. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see about that. That that's still you we know got I hope that man saved his money. Yeah. I, I honestly think a little bit of this cap space is going to be used to bring somebody in. There's a lot of decent guys that, that are still out in the market that I think could, could match this offense. Tariq Cohen is still out there from Chicago, who I think would be an excellent fit. Same with Justin Jefferson or Jackson from San Diego. Um, he had, no, I, he had, he had some like really good Justin, numbers. I like the Justin Jackson. I'm not too sure I agree with the Tariq Cohen, but the Justin Jackson I'm with you on. Because if you look at Benny Snell's numbers from last year, they were they were way down. They were his average rushing yards per carry was well below the late average. Well, yeah, we're, they were way down. The man never seen the field. They had the work cow out there. That boy was too busy back there just preserving his pedicure. Yeah, and, and blowing air into his spinner rim air, mouthpiece. Okay, but you got to admit that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was that that was very very cool i think he should put that and the new cap on in training camp and just run around no yeah. I, I i look at i look at the running back situation i i want to see from an offense standpoint someone like jarek mckinnon signed they have the cap space right he's kind of the perfect fit as a secondary option he brings experience to the offense as we've talked before this is this is going to be one of the youngest offenses in the NFL, whether Kenny's starting or whether Mitch is. Someone like a McKinnon who's been there, who's done it, who can show these people, this is how you're an NFL pro, right? I think there's a lot of value with that. And I think that's something that's important. Mm -hmm. that these young guys need to see. I said it in the wide receiver room. I don't have the exact name that needs to come in in the wide receiver room to show them. But someone like a Jared McKinnon who can come into this locker room and say, hey, I've been there. I've done it. This is how we do it. Well, and they, they need to add the, the thunder. We have the thunder. We need some lightning. Okay. We used to have that with Jerome Bettis and Willie Parker, and it worked out very, very well. We kind of went away from that and just had that one significant bell cow. You know, we, haven't we need had thunder and lightning. I give you that. But let me ask you guys something. What's the oldest offense in football? Do you guys know? Tampa Bay? No, 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 no. Not not as far as age. The oldest offensive scheme in football. Couldn't tell you. You tell me, T.A. You guys ever hear of the wing T? Yes. What's the possibility in Canada super magical, magical offense? We go back there and we go ahead and we throw in Mr. Watt and Mr. Connor with Najee we'll go a little old school. You're telling me that those three young lads aren't capable enough to run the rock and give three different looks in a crazy looking offense, because that's what we keep hearing. This is going to be a crazy looking offense. Well, if you think and about everything it, everything gets recycled. Yeah. The, 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 I hate even bringing their name up, but the Cleveland Browns kind of slow rolled that in. Last year, I want to say by bringing Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt on the field at the same time, it gives you an element of surprise, and you're not sure who you're going to who's going to get the ball, and each one of them brings a different element to a football game. So I I would probably be okay with that, especially if I, we're going to be run heavy. I don't think we're going to be run heavy though. I I really don't. We're looking to be balanced. I yeah, it's not going to be like what we saw two years ago. And unpredictable. That's I think that's the key word we're looking for. Wanting to be unpredictable. We've been too predictable. And what about the Wildcat? What about multiple QBs? Could we see all three QBs hit the field this year? I mean, the Saints did it for a while. Boy, could you imagine what the national experts, their heads would roll if Kenny Pickett caught a pass with those hands? Oh my gosh! Could you imagine the headlines? <laughs> yeah, are they soft hands? Are they hard hands? Doesn't matter. I they're they're soft, baby would hands. they be the smallest hands to ever catch an NFL pass? It might be. 
it might be bring in Guinness if we ever try to try to try that. I, you know, call it the Pittsburgh special, baby. I joked when they were trotting out Duck Hodges and Mason and kind of rotating back and forth. I said, you know, they were heading into week 17. You know, they had to win to go to the playoffs. I was like, why not bust out the triple option? Screw it. Yeah. And this, I, I'm, I'm completely joking. That will never happen. Yeah. This, Honestly, this, I, 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 our best bet is to have Mason run the Wildcat. I agree. I don't want him anywhere near the field. <laughs> I don't uh, know what you I both took Mason's before the show, be but it needs to stop. It needs I don't to stop. Get, I don't want to. It get needs to stop right now. To. Yes. I don't I, think I, Mason's going to be here after week no, two. I, I I think this th- this offensive scheme depends on who is going to be under center. That's still yet to be known. How this offense, whether it's going to be run heavy, if it's Kenny Pickett. We're going to be running the ball a lot. I guarantee it. That's just how – that's the name of the game of the rookie quarterback. All okay. right, Trey Train. So let's break down Coach's Corner. What is Matt Canada saying right now about the QB competition? Well, Since he's we saying – We have our finger on the pulse right now. He He's saying that it's going to be a fair competition, but fair doesn't mean equal reps, okay? Meaning he already knows what he has in Mason Rudolph, okay? He's had him for a year. He knows what to expect from Mason. He's got new two cats in the building that he needs to take a look at. So, so Mason's getting shortchanged just because he's a veteran of the offense. Yes, yes, according to Matt. So, Canada. so why do we even keep him? Why don't we just start? Or maybe we should just trade him right now to the Cleveland Browns and and bring in uh, what's his name, who's not going to go to the Browns training camp this year, Baker Mayfield. Yeah, oh, is that his name? Baker Why not? Mayfield. Yeah, just swap do, do him out think, now. Do you think Mason and Miles Garrett would get along real well? I think they would get along great. I think they're buddies now. Yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, I think, I think this is kind of one of those things where they're laying the table that Mitch is going to be week one starter. Again, I, I'll, I'm going to say this till the day I die. Well, not till the day I die, but till it happens. They're gonna let they're gonna let Mitch go out there. And I said that wrong. Mitch is gonna go out there, he's gonna start the first three games in eleven days. He goes one and two, oh and three, he's done. Period. I don't want I don't want Kenny going out there playing his first three NFL games in eleven days. I just don't. I don't think it's good for his development. I don't think it's smart. Let Mitch go out there and take his beatings. Let Mason go out there and do his thing. But I think Mason will be cut by week two in the preseason. Or Trey. Man, so far, all I've heard is sacrificial lambs. We're, set, we're, yeah. we're we're getting ready to send Mason off with Miles so they can walk in the pride parade together. And then we're going to turn around and we're going to sacrifice Mitch just so the heir apparent can ride in on the white stallion to save the day and Kenny Pickett. Is that what I'm hearing here, boys? I mean, you don't you don't sign Mitch and then draft Kenny. So you sign you Mitch just to make him a sacrificial lamb. Do you uh, do you do you sign Mitch Trubisky right when free agency opens for him to sit on the bench behind a rookie his first year? I mean, you That's looked at all the quarterbacks that... and said, you know, the quarterback I'd really like to see get hurt and make a sacrificial lamb is going to be Mitch Trubisky. Colbert, get on the horn. Let's make that happen. Hey, maybe maybe there's a full-on conspiracy in the NFL that Mitch Trubisky has to have his job taken by someone else, right? Well, then again, you maybe, know what? Maybe he needs to get lawyers involved at this point. Here's a twist. Maybe they brought in Mitch Trubisky to go ahead and coach the offense because if all this fails, Candace is on the hot seat. He's out. We're going to need an offense coordinator. Maybe it's I, Mitch Trubisky for OC. Yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> I, so you want him to be your offensive coordinator, CJ, but not as not the quarterback. <laughs> I mean, the dude put up with Matt Nagy for three years. He knows what the hell he's doing, I guess. <laughs> Listen. All right. 
so so here's one here, here's one <laughs> name that's really been hitting hot hot seat or not hot seat but spotlight this week and that's the man from down south miami mr brian flores he's already had to go ahead and shake a few commentaries about the lawsuit and he's not concentrating on that right now it's 100 percent football i mean all everything coming out of camp right now seems pretty positive i mean i like this pickup i mean do you think we're actually going to see a little bit of his footprint here because the thing that scares me the most here is what came out last year about tomlin calling the defensive plays and butler's defense and his austin just going to go ahead and be another patsy is flory's going to be calling the plays? What do we got going on on that defense, and where is Flores really fitting into this, guys? As I said, kind of, you know, T.A., you weren't around last week, but I said when it comes to Flores, Flor, yeah, Brian Flores, is he's getting rave reviews out of camp, right? And as we know, he's not someone that if he sees something wrong, he's not just going to sit there and take it. He's going to voice his opinion. He's not going to be a yes man. I think this is great, great, great for the defense. Yeah, absolutely. And and the thing with Brian Flores is uh, he brings that no-nonsense attitude to this defense once again. Um, I, I, I think that kind of bit us in the butt last year with Keith Butler. You know, I, I think Brian Flores' job on this defense is to rip these guys a new a-hole when they, they don't stick to their assignments. Um, I, I think Brian Flores has high expectations with this. Um, and ultimately, this is an in-season interview for him to get a job next year. Yeah. I, I yeah. think this this is just a one-year type. I do, too. Thing. I think he's going to get a head coaching job. And one of the things that's great about that, being within the Steelers organization, they're going to get a nice comp pick. Nice third round pick for developing a minority head coach. So you're saying our 13th ranked pro football or PP or yeah, pro football. What does the other F stand for? Freaky. Uh, I have a pro word football for it that focus. I don't think you want me to say oh, focus because it's focus, always my. Yeah, it, it, that's not the F I think of when I think of that. <laughs> You're telling me our 13th ranked coach, according to the PFF, thought ahead for a compensatory pick? And are, is everybody okay with Tomlin being 13th ranked behind the likes of Cliff Klingsbury, Brandon Staley, Frank Wright, Pete Carroll? Listen, when I first <laughs> Listen. put my eyes on this, I wanted to puke. Okay, this is absolutely garbage. PFF should be embarrassed to even put something like this out. Um, I understand putting Belichick first, okay? Um, but in that same breath, PFF knocked Tomlin because he had an below-average quarterback the past few years. <clears throat> okay, can we knock Bill Belichick because he hasn't won diddly squat without a quarterback named Tom Brady. Okay. He went into that season. Um, I can't exactly remember the, the exact date with Matt Castle. Okay. Did not work out. Then they go ahead and try a Cam Newton experiment. Failed miserably. Now they have Mac Jones. Okay. Tomlin has taken his team to the playoffs just like Bill Belichick. Um, it, it, it's it's utterly disgusting that you have not even put Tomlin, who hasn't had a losing season since he began coaching in the NFL as a head coach, not even in the top five, and behind the guys like Frank Wright, who his team had an utter collapse, thank goodness, because it helped us get into the playoffs against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and Cliff Kingsbury, who just now got into the playoffs this year, okay, Pittsburgh and Arizona made the playoffs last year. So this this definitely rubs me the wrong way. All right, so let me ask you this real quick. And, and CJ, I'm going to put you on the spot on this. You know, John Harbaugh 
was ranked number two, if I do recall. And if we're looking back over a decade of a body of work, as Tomlin would like to say, you know, he's missed the playoffs a total of five times in the last 10 years. However, he does have more playoff wins than Tomlin does. So which is, does that give him the right to be number second? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No. Here's my thing. To answer your question, I think Harbaugh is a great coach too. And I think it's amazing. Usually when you have a great coach in a division, you see turnover between the other three teams. I'll use Belichick as an example. The Jets, Miami, so on and so forth, have seen great turnover in their head coaching positions in Buffalo up until McDurbin got there. But to coincide with that, they ran into Josh Allen. It is amazing for someone like Harbaugh and Tomlin to both be in the same division, have the same longevity and to continue both of them to win, make playoff appearances, win the division. Harbaugh Harbaugh is interesting because he's the one with Joe Flacco and he's kind of winning with Lamar. It's it's one of those things where if you were to have a draft with head coaches today, Belichick's going one, right? Then the next four picks, no matter how you spell it out, is going to be something Harbaugh, Tomlin, McVay, and... Probably McDermott. I I was going to say McDermott myself. Yes. Mm. I this PFF bullshit. Cool. Yeah, Andy Reid. I missed. I I left out Andy Reid. Just kind of popping into my mind. But so 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 let's just put this into perspective. I don't agree with it, but I do think that it does have some merit. And the only reason I say that is is because Tomlin had a Hall of Fame quarterback and failed to produce. With that said, we now have Omar setting up his staff, which ultimately is going to affect whether Tomlin continues to stay on track or fall off the track. So, freight train, what's Omar up to? Well, it seems like he's adding some of his... um his own protégés to help him out with, with the scouting. And he um, now, mind you, I'm not, I'm not very good with names uh, just to throw that out there. Uh, Cool. Mark Cokes. Did I say that right? Cool. He's another French guy, man. We like our French guys here in the Steeler nation. We got too many Polacks running around you. Yinzers. Right. So, so he is, (laughs) He is going to take over Omar's old job and, and do the salary cap. And this guy has been with Omar and been o- Omar's right hand man for a while now. So I'm I'm pretty excited on that on that part because I feel like there's not going to be a drop off there because Omar's kind of taught him his ways and Omar's done a fantastic job with the salary cap. Okay. So I I, I think this was, was a good move. Uh, there's familiarity with it and familiarity is very, 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 very good. I like how they're not, they're not saying, Hey, Omar, this guy's been here. This guy's been here. This guy's been here. You're inheriting all these guys. What we're seeing with Wydell, uh, who they brought over from the Eagles. They're letting him do his thing. They're handing him the keys to the car. Now, obviously he's got to keep it within the lanes, but Hey, I like what they're doing. They're making adjustments and they're letting things fly. Building within. All right. Well, Steelers Nation, I think the jury's still out on where this train is rolling. But I will tell you where this train has rolled in the past. And that is history forged in steel by our man, the one, the only, the conductor, Freight Train. What do we got going on in the history forged in steel, buddy? Hey, woo, woo, here we go. 
Uh-oh. Um, what was what, wait, wait, what what was a woo woo? Was it was that like a, a train whistle? Like, like a whistle. We gotta work on that. We gotta work on that. Woo-woo. Tell them, CJ. We gotta work, work on work that. Work in progress. Okay. Gotta be better. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll go practice in the mirror like Todd did before this show, and and dial it in. You but, see how what my hair looks, right? Yeah, it looks looks fantastic. I probably should have did a little bit more speaking than Coleman, but go ahead. <laughs> So we have June 18th, 1999. I was five years, nine years old. We won't even get into how old TA was. Uh, The groundbreaking ceremony um, had commenced for the construction of the ketchup bottle, Heinz Field. And then on June 21st, 2005, Myron Cope retires from the radio booth after 35 years and then june 17th 1965 the hall of famer dermani dawson was born so happy birthday dermani well i tell you what all of that was some uh, remarkable history and uh I was glad to see Myron was still alive to see the groundbreaking of Heinz Field, how much he meant to Three River Stadium. And uh, Dermonte, hopefully uh, hopefully uh, you had a very good birthday. Well, guys, we're about at the end of the show here, so let's step outside the realm here real quick. We've got some quick hitters going on. We're talking about wide receivers cashing in. Oh, man. CJ, who just got the payday? Look, Cooper Cup, baby. Three years, 80 million. What a time to be alive, to be a wide receiver. It's so broken. It's so broken. But good for Cooper. He earned it. 26.7. You call that broken? Those wide receivers are like, he keep raising the bar, baby. baby. Yeah. Keep yeah. raising the bar. Before you know it, they're going to be making what the QB is. Listen, I'm just glad that Cooper Cup got paid, so uh, he's not going to be that sneaky fifth, sixth round draft pick uh, in fantasy football that sneaks up on everybody and beats them. I don't know. He's won. He's won me a league or two this past few years. Yeah, a it's certain been somebody, awesome. a certain somebody on this TV show beat me with Cooper Cup last year. I'm still trying to get over it. Ah, uh, my boy. Do we want to get in the Browns QB mess? Look, I think let's we just, have let's to just go ahead and sum. Yes. Let, let's just sum it up here real quick because there's still so much more. All I got to say is we were all on the free rub and tug by our Patriots owner. But the way it sold to Sean Watson, I mean, you heard the old six days on the road or I've got 10 women. I He's got like 200 of them that are coming out of the woodwork. It sounds to me like he had a fetish and an illness with massage parlors. And Baker is sitting in the driver's seat right now. So even though he's not at mandatory mini camp, I think we'll have more to talk about here. But my question is, because this has been inked, is DK Metcalf coming to the Steelers? Can't see that coming. Can't see that happening. No. Just I, I just don't like so. massage therapist, can't see that coming. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. No, I I don't I don't uh I I don't see that happening at all. They're they're gonna want you know somebody's left arm and first b- born for DK Metcalf. Um, and and then to dive back into the, the Deshaun Watson situation, this oh this, you're bringing this it back. Abs- don't do it. Don't I just I it. just have one thing that's been burning me that I need to get out. Ta is that's what Deshaun said. That's why he's in this mess. Don't do it. <laughs> the, the the one thing that burns my ass, okay, is when teams that have historically but on the losing side, decide to choose getting wins over integrity. And this is starting to really come back and bite the Browns because it all started. We all saw what Kareem Hunt did. Browns scooped him up. Hey, he's going to help us get wins. We don't care about his past. Boom. Now here we are with Deshaun Watson. 
you just guarantee him 200 and what is it 30 million dollars guaranteed fully knowing his past you're choosing to get football wins over being integrity and having morals for your football team and it's driving fans out of your stands which ultimately pay the bills this is this is going to be bad this is going to end horribly it's not going to end horribly it's not I, I, here's I, here's what's going to happen it's going to take a year he's going to get suspended he's going to get suspended eight games nfl is going to do what they do when it comes to pr Week nine, week ten, he's going to be back out there playing. Is I think what it's it is. Good. It's, it's not good. It's not good. I don't agree with it. Let's be realistic. Let's not. Let's get off our high horses. All right. We saw it happen with Big Ben. Let's not be holler than that, you. Attitude. That wasn't twenty four cases, CJ. That was two. Yeah, and I'm just saying this it is still this happened. is twenty four. This is very very serious. The NFL oh, has to take this So serious. is Big Ben's. The, I'm just saying. Yes, what, I'm not taken away from that, but th- this is on a whole nother spectrum. Here. Yeah, that's this, what I'm saying. He's going to get suspended for eight games in week nine. He's going to be out there. He's going to be playing. I, I, I think that the NFL's hands are tied on this one. I, no, I, they're I not. Really do. Week nine, he'll be playing. You know what I think? I think the Cleveland Browns are an upstanding organization, and I think that their willingness – to go ahead and contribute $230 million. That equals out to about $10 million per massage therapist. So there are a lot of massage therapists right now who are going to break the bank. And I want to thank you, Browns, for keeping the economy going and taking care of them young fine women. And Deshaun, at the end of the day, when you're sitting back at the homestead, you and that other gentleman from San Francisco, whose name I will not mention, can sit there and talk about how you went ahead and pissed away all those millions of dollars. How? Thank how you, about, Cleveland. How about yeah. Jimmy Haslam? Who knew Jimmy Haslam was going to be the guy that's like, you know what? I'm getting into the redistribution of wealth. <laughs> Him and Flying J just yeah. making just everyone ma- rich. He's just making up for that little tax thing or that little, <laughs> that little, that little, what was it? The, the rebates. He's just making up for yeah. the rebates. Hey, the Browns at the end of the day, like what I said, hate what I said, the Browns are going to Brown. And this is the most Cleveland Browns thing you'll ever see in your life. Period. Oh no, no, never say never. <laughs> There'll be more. All right, gentlemen. Hey, it's been great talking what we love. Steelers football fans, I'm glad to be back. It's JT. I hope you're enjoying wherever you're at. And most importantly, guys, have a wonderful evening. Steelers Nation, we'll see you next week. We'll see you. Later. Check back next week into the Steelers realm 